I mean, I believe that the present style of doing medicine, which is assign a diagnosis and then prescribe drugs, is really outdated. And what is really interesting is that there's so much science. There's so much research out there and so many protocols by which you can learn to take care of yourself using non medicinal manners. Now, my intent of this YouTube channel is to give you guys all the tools that you need to be able to be the best stewards of your own healthcare. And this is information about the basic science that you'll need to understand this. It's about what testing you can use to get some more insight into what's driving your state of health or your state of disease. And finally, what are the herbal, nutritional, hormonal, metabolic and cutting edge applications that we have at our disposal to really turn around our health. So in this short video, what I wanna do is talk a little bit about hypertensive disease. I mean, this is really a scourge that is taking over the planet and affects so many people and cuts short so many lives because of high blood pressure. So the first thing is what is high blood pressure? What is is it's simply the heart requiring to generate a greater amount of pressure over resistance. So just think about turning on your garden hose. I mean, you know how it is when you turn on the hose and the water's flowing freely through it, then start to put a kink in the hose. You can feel the pressure building up behind that kink. And then the water, read the blood, starts to exit the hose in a more erratic fashion. This is precisely what's happening with hypertensive disease, but there's even more, because not only is the heart needing to work harder against resistance, and another important thing is happening. And what is happening is that the delicate layer of cells that lines our blood vessels, this is known as the endothelium, is actually being subjected to increases amount of, or increased amount of stress and strain. So what does this do? What this is, is these are forces across a surface that cause it to deform over time. And what we're learning is that over time, when your blood, blood vessels are exposed to high levels of blood pressure, that there is an intrinsic damage in the cells, in the connectivity between the cells, and then this then allows for an autoimmune process to take place behind this cell layer. Now we're gonna get into this a little later because you know the bugaboo in medicine today is what is your cholesterol? And I can tell you right now that asking the question, what is your cholesterol, is not a sufficient question to address what's really going on in cardiovascular disease. So high blood pressure is also known as hypertension. This is when the heart is needing to generate an additional amount of force to pump the blood around our body. Oftentimes, this is because of different factors that cause us to increase an amount of stress. So when you're under stress, when you're anxious, when you're pulled over to get a ticket, your blood pressure goes up. This is part of our flight or fight response, which is preparing the body for a confrontation for a conflict of some sorts. This is normal hypertension. This is what our body is supposed to do because it maintains a higher amount of blood flow to our brain and our organs in time of stress. But when this is not helpful is when it has become chronic over a long standing period of time. The other thing that contributes to elevated blood pressure is increased resistance, much in the same way that if you were to take that hose and bend it and decrease the amount of space that water had to move through the hose, you are then generating an increased amount of pressure behind that blockage. The blockage, as we know it, is something known as atherosclerosis. This is commonly known as hardening of the arteries, and this is effectively one of the foundational things that contributes to uh, some of the complications of hypertension disease, hypertensive disease. So what happens is when we subject our blood vessels to increased blood pressure for a longer period of time, whether due to uh, environmental stresses or whether due to actual physical stresses across these blood vessels from deposition of calcium, we begin to get some more damage through the shear and the strain across these, these um, cells. And then what happens is we almost develop what's known as an autoimmune process behind this endothelial layer. So there was some really cool research that came out this last year uh, by Harvard Medical School. And what they showed is they showed that there is a certain type of cell that helps to generate an autoimmune process that guards our barriers. And as you guys follow what I'm teaching, you'll understand that the, there's a layer of, um, within this pyramid approach that I use to teach what's driving our health, that is how we maintain our barriers. And the most common barrier, as we know, is our skin and our gut. But we also have barriers that protect our brain, such as the blood-brain barrier, as well as the subendothelial barrier. And our immune system guards these barriers. 
So what happens in hypertensive disease? What happens is that these immune cells, these are known as antigen presenting cells, and these are the cells that were uh, demonstrated in this Har Harvard paper recently. These antigen presenting cells recognize molecules that are effectively foreign to our, to our health. And the primary molecule that is driving cardiovascular disease is something known as an oxidized lipid. Aha, now that brings us back to the question of how much information are we actually getting on your basic lipid panel. You know, the one where your doctor goes, good cholesterol, bad cholesterol, triglycerides, that's it, take a statin drug. There's so much more information, and here's why. It's not the cholesterol that causes cardiovascular disease. I like to say that, that cholesterol is effectively present at the scene of the crime. But what does contribute to cardiovascular disease is something known as oxidized lipids, or oxidized LDL. And when we start getting smaller cholesterol particles, like small, dense, LDL, or another genetically mediated particle, which is known as lipoprotein little a. When these get oxidized, when these get exposed to inflammatory molecules in the body, this changes how they look to the immune system. So now we've got a, a process, namely hypertension, which is causing some more shear and strain, causing some of these cells that line the endothelium, the lining of our blood vessels, to pull apart a little bit. As this happens, these small, dense cholesterol particles make it underneath this um, endothelial lining, and then they're recognized by these antigen-presenting cells. What do antigen-presenting cells do? They basically tell the rest of the immune system, hey, look, there's an invader in our space. There is something that we don't like that has made it across one of these barriers that we're trying to protect. And then what happens? At this point, due to some immune signaling, these, uh, this oxidized LDL uh, then becomes what's called a, a fatty streak and then a foam cell. And then over time, what happens is these become calcium secreting cells. And this is where you get the atherosclerosis, the hardening or calcification of our blood vessels. Now, the typical allopathic Western approach is to say, let's put somebody on a medication to bring down their blood pressure. But what saddens me is that there are no questions asked about what are the different factors that we can address that either, one, affect how the immune system is working, two, affect the presence of these modified lipid panels, remember these are called oxidized LDL, or what are the other factors that we can do to bring down the stress response that's driving the hypertensive state in the first place. So instantly we can see that there are a lot of different opportunities to intervene to get people better that aren't simply reliant on saying, take this drug. And let me tell you one other thing about some of the hypertensive drugs. They're all associated with nutritional deficiencies. Now, I know your mainstream doctor probably hasn't read about the, you know, the magnesium, the vitamin D deficiencies that are associated with some of these different drugs. As a matter of fact, there are several vitamins, namely B vitamins um, uh, and D and I'm forgetting the last one, but there are a lot of vitamins that are actually being influenced um, by these antihypertensive drugs. Now, every doctor knows that if you're on the drug known as Lasix or furosemide, that this is associated with losses of potassium in the body. And oftentimes your doctor will prescribe potassium to go along with this drug. But why we are so blinded to the fact that so many different antihypertensive drugs also cause deficiencies in important nutrients like vitamin D and magnesium and B vitamins is beyond me. Okay, so now we're taking a functional approach, right? So the first thing is, what are some of the factors that are affecting uh, our stress response? And one of the important questions we can ask is, what is our body's response to cortisol? Because cortisol's job is to you know, help to engage this fight or flight response. Now, its primary job is to raise our blood sugar, but it also increases our blood pressure and further increases some of the resistance that we need to maintain in our blood vessels. Because in the event that you were cut or bitten or started to bleed, you would want to have adequate adrenaline and cortisol in your body to be able to clamp down on those vessels to help to maintain the blood pressure that we need to keep our heart and our brains alive. The other thing that's an important question that needs to be looked at from a functional standpoint is what is our nutritional state? As I mentioned, there are a number of different nutrients that are associated with antihypertensive medications that are actually lost over a period of time. But the other thing is there's a lot of research out there that is showing that our nutritional state is directly associated with our uh, blood pressure. A good example is our magnesium level. There are thousands of papers that have been published that have looked at the relationship between 
magnesium, and hypertension. What about vitamin D? Similarly, there are all kinds of different papers that are published. Another thing which is really interesting is that there's so much information out there about the way that phytonutrients, these are these plant-based uh, chemicals, actually work to help our body to maintain a lower state of blood pressure uh, through any number of different means. And then the other questions we can begin to ask ourselves is how do things like our insulin secretion, which is really a function of the amount of carbohydrates that we consume in our diet. How does our thyroid relate to our blood pressure? And so many people are walking around in a relatively hypothyroid, a subclinical hypothyroidism, and if they were to actually use thyroid hormone to increase their uh, thyroid hormone uh, access to their cells, many of you would find that your blood pressure would come down and your pulse would come down because the beating of your heart is so much more efficient when there's adequate T3. And as you know, T3 is the active uh, hormone in thyroid hormone. The other thing that we can address is what's going on with our gut and our other barriers in our body. Because as we expose our gut to microbial or environmental toxins, and I'm even talking about food here, we develop greater amounts of an inflammatory state. Um, again, and this then drives taking a normal cholesterol molecule, which is, hey, just doing what it is to do, what it intends to do, which is provide cholesterol to your cells, which they need, and turning it into a molecule, which is actually a little time bomb containing oxidized LDL, which is guaranteed to send our immune system into a tailspin. So what's going on with your gut? What are the foods that you're eating? Is it possible that you've got an indwelling um, infection or overgrowth of a parasite or perhaps a yeast species that is contributing to an inflammatory state across your gut? And hey, we all know that the gut is the primary place for the production of two of our neurotransmitters, nam namely serotonin and GABA, and these are both calming neurotransmitters. The other thing we need to address is the presence of toxins in the body. And there is good evidence out there that people who develop high levels to heavy metals, namely lead and mercury and cadmium, all have hypertension. Now, I know that many of you are probably not living on a well, you're probably not working in a brake factory, you're probably not having the exposures to heavy metals that a lot of people could have but it's important to at least consider this as we're addressing the state of hypertension. And the last thing that we need to do is address hormonal states as well. We know that as men get into a lower state of testosterone, um, hypogonadism, uh, that they develop a greater state of cardiovascular and hypertensive disorders. So is there something like high stress, uh, poor nutrition, uh, that's driving a lower state of testosterone? Why not measure it and find out? So here we have in this short video a different perspective on the steps that we can take to address hypertensive disorders. Uh, in my practice, what I first do is I establish a good foundation of nutritional markers. These are market, mark, measuring things like C-reactive, I'm sorry, high sensitivity C-reactive protein, which is a marker of inflammation. We also look at vitamin D, red blood cell magnesium, and red blood cell zinc as well. The World Health Organization estimates that a full 25% of the planet is zinc deficient. So what's yours? Other nutritional markers that are so important are, is, a, is a marker known as homocysteine. And this is a functional reflection of how well your B6, B12, and B9 are working. There is unquestionably a strong association between high homocysteine and cardiovascular disease and stroke, as well as Alzheimer's disease. Has your doctor ever thought to measure your homocysteine uh, level? The answer is probably no. The next thing that you need to get started on to really understand how to bring down your blood pressure is to address your energetic triad, and this is cortisol, insulin, and thyroid. What's your fasting insulin? Because as the fasting insulin gets higher, our baseline amount of insulin that we're secreting gets higher, and insulin is an independent driver of inflammation. What does inflammation do? It drives the oxidation of the LDL molecule, which sets our immune system into a tailspin across the subendothelium, which has been, which has been previously damaged by the hypertensive disease. Whew, we're almost through this. And finally, other interventions that we can do is to optimize our diet. Make sure that you're taking plenty of fiber into your diet because this in and of itself will help to bring down our immune system's activity along our gut. And the other thing that you can do is eat more plants. Eat a rainbow, 
take more of these colored phytonutrients into your body to help to increase your body's ability to fight off the inflammatory process that are driving the state of hypertensive disease and all the downstream effects. I hope that this video has been helpful to you. As always, I am making these to empower you guys to be best stewards of your own healthcare, to learn the tools, the tricks, the techniques, the testing that you can do in the privacy of your own home to really turn around all aspects of your health. Hopefully you got a good idea in this short video of the different ways of looking at hypertensive disease. Um, I'm confident that over time we can turn around all aspects of health with this, this approach and we can change medicine because over time this kind of medicine is going to be irrefutably better than our conventional identify a diagnosis, give a drug, treat a symptom approach. Yawn, I'm so tired of that. I'm making these videos for you guys. Of course, if you're still in this video, be sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment before, below. I'll be sure to respond to all of your comments personally. And of course, I will see you guys in another video. Be well.